Hi, everybody. I'm Mickey Gousset, and I want to thank you for taking the time to go on this journey into GitHub Project Boards. GitHub Project Boards are a great way to organize and prioritize the work you need to do on your project. So far, we've learned how to add issues to our boards. Now, let's see how we can work with those issues and what the automation can do to help us. Let's get started. This video is about working with issues on GitHub project boards. I've already shown you how to add issues to a project board, either through the issues page or from the board itself. Once you have the issue on the board, you can move the issue through your process that you have defined on your boards. And if you have defined automation on your project board, the issue will move automatically to certain columns based off of events. Let's look at a couple of different demos. In the first demo, I'm going to use the user project board and repository we created previously. I already have issues on those boards from the previous video, so I'm going to take those issues and move them through whatever process is on that board. While doing that, we'll also see what available information is on the board from the issue. We'll close and reopen the issues and see if anything happens. And we'll also look at filtering on the board. In the second demo, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use the automated Kanban with review board. And we're going to look at moving issues through that board, which has some automation on it, and see how the automation helps us. Let's get started. So we're going to start this video by looking at the user-owned board that I created earlier. So if I select your projects, I can see there's the board that I created. And we can see there are the two issues that we worked with in the previous video. Now remember, this board has no automation. And we can see that because there's nothing listed at the bottom of any of the columns. Or if we go into each column, and go to Manage Automation, we can see that the preset is set to None. So this means that any, any of the cards I have on the board, in this case any of the issues that I have, if I move them through my process, I'll be moving them manually. And as we saw previously, I can do this by either dragging and dropping or by using keyboard shortcuts. First thing I'm going to do before I get started though is open up my menu. And you can see one of the things the menu gives us is a list of activities that have happened on the board. So now if I grab this first issue and I move it to doing, the activity has updated to show that I've moved that issue to doing. So we do have a history of how things have changed on the board. If I select my issue one, we can see some of the information that's available to me from the issue. I can see the issue name and the original comment, which I can edit from here. I can see if anyone else has added comments to the issue. I can see who it's assigned to, any labels, any project boards, any milestones, any pull requests that it's linked to. And I can modify all of these things directly on the open window here. I don't have to go to the issue to modify those. I can also click here to go to the issue to see the full details for that issue. So I could click a card and I could make some edits, or I could even click here to be taken to the actual issue itself where I could make changes to the issue. Now, if we go back to the board, I can also say take this card and move it to finished. One thing I want to point out is that moving this card, issue two, from backlog to finished, doesn't actually do anything to modify the issue itself. If I go look at the issue itself, this issue is still open. So moving it from one column to the other 
doesn't make any changes to the actual issue. It's just modifying where the card is in your process. It's in the finished column, but the issue itself is still open. So if we go to issue one here, I can close this issue. So I've closed this issue. You can see it's closed. It's changed into red closed icon there. If I go back to the board, you'll notice that the icon beside issue one has changed to that red closed icon but issue one itself is still in the doing column. I'm just reiterating here that there is no connection between if you move a card to a certain column, it automatically changes a status or other value on the issue itself. If I go back to issue one and I say reopen this issue, you can see it's opened back up. And if I go back to my board, the issue has changed, is now showing as being opened again. This board has no automation, which means any changes I make to the issue aren't going to trigger a card to move from one column to the other. Everything has to be done manually, and that's intentional. That's how I set this board up. One of the other options you have on this board is also the ability to filter through the cards. Remember, these are issues, but they're also called cards on this board. So, for example, I could come up here and filter for the word 2, and you'll notice how it changed the board to where it only shows the card that has the word 2 in it. I could also search for certain labels. So, I could say label, bug, and it limits it to just the cards that are labeled as a bug. I can search for cards that are maybe assigned to a certain person. So maybe I want to see all the cards that are assigned to me. So I could say assignee, Mickey GitHub one. And I can see all of the cards that are assigned to me. And you'll also notice as I start typing, we get autocomplete. So the board ha tries to help me determine what I'm trying to filter for. So that's what happens when we work with our user board, which we set up as no automation. Let's go look at a different board that we set up, which was our automated Kanban with review board. So if we go to our Acme repository, and we go to projects. One of the projects boards that we set up was the automated Kanban with reviews. And as we did in the previous video, we added two issues to this. One of the things you get with boards that have automation in place, and you can see that I have automation in place because I can see down here that this column is being automated as to do, this column is being automated as in progress, Several of these are, and then this one's being automated is done. But when you have automation on your board, you get a tracking progress bar along the top of your board. So here we can see that right now we have completed zero cards. We have zero cards in progress, and we have two cards currently in the to do column. By default, when you do enable an automation when you do enable automation on a project board, the overall progress is tracked there. And you can also see this here. You can see progress on the list of all the project boards. If we go open one of those issues, such as issue one, we can see progress tracked there. You can turn this off if you want to. But it's good to know that it's there. It's kind of, I find it kind of helpful. So let's go back to our board. And just as we could with the other board, we could drag and drop cards to different columns. We could use keyboard shortcuts to move cards to different columns. But 
Since we have automation turned on, we can also use automation to help us move things to different columns. Now, if we open up the automation in the to do column, we saw this in the previous video. When we added new issues to this board, they automatically showed up in the to do column because we have the automation set that way. Now, for issues, which is what we're concerned with in this video, the other automation we have under here is reopened. But you'll notice that the reopened is being used in the in progress column which means that if we had an issue that was closed and then we reopened that issue, it would automatically show up in this column as well. Now the review in progress and the reviewer approved columns are both used for pull requests, which we're gonna look at in a future video. And then the automation for the done column for issues are any closed issues will automatically move to the done column. So some general workflow that we might follow is we add a new issue to the board and it automatically gets put in the to-do column. While that issue is being worked, it's manually moved to the in-progress column. Now, I'm not going to see anything on the issue itself that necessarily says this was moved to the in-progress column, but you can see that the status of the board updated to show that we've got one to-do and one in progress. Now if I take this issue and then once let's say I've completed this issue so I will come over here and I will say completed and I will close it. I've now moved the issue into a closed state. Look at the status. The status shows that we've got one issue now in the done column and one still in the to-do. And if we go back over to the board, we can see that the issue is now got the red little check mark icon showing that it's done, and it was automatically moved to the done column. I didn't have to move it manually. And if I come back to this issue and I reopen it, you'll see the issue has changed to green. If we look at our progress now, We've, we go back to one to do and one in progress. And if we look at our board, the issue moves back to the in progress column because the automation is set up that any reopened issues automatically show up in the in progress column. So with the boards, we can either drag and drop our issues manually through our process, or we can use automation to help us with some of the movement of our cards as we work through our process and as our issues, in this case, change different states. I hope you have enjoyed this video on working with issues on your GitHub project boards. Make sure you come back to check out the next video in the series, Adding Pull Requests to GitHub Project Boards, where I will show you how to add pull requests to your project boards so you can track them through your process. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more DevOps goodness. Thanks for watching.